Street Culture Museum is in the historic Treme neighborhood. Treme is the oldest African American neighborhood in the United States. Since the 18th century, free people of color were able to buy land in this faubourg, or neighborhood in French. Mardi Gras Indians celebrate Fat Tuesday in a special way. While crowds of locals and tourists congregate along Canal Street or St. Charles Avenue, Backstreet Culture marches to its own drum. Each year, members of more than 20 Mardi Gras Indian tribes spend thousands of hours designing and creating their own extravagant costumes covered with beads, sequins, and feathers in every color you can imagine. Congo Square on Rampart Street was where slaves and free people of color were allowed to gather on Sundays to play music, dance, and even perform voodoo ceremonies. Congo Square is now part of Armstrong Park, named for New Orleans' own Louis Armstrong. <laughs> The story of Michaela Almanesta Pontalba is intriguing. At the age of 15, this New Orleans legend was forced into marriage with a 32-year-old fortune-hunting cousin living far away in Paris. Once there, she stubbornly refused to sign over her inheritance to her husband and his very insistent father. In a fit of rage, her father-in-law shot Michaela several times and then turned the gun on himself. Miraculously, Michaela recovered and returned to her beloved New Orleans, where she defied the traditions of her day by designing, contracting, and supervising the building of the Pontalba Apartments, the oldest apartment buildings in the United States. They still flank Jackson Square today. Despite the tragedy of her short married life, Michaela insisted that the initials of both her birth name of Almanester and her married name, Pontalba, be monogrammed on every lace panel of these famous balconies. There's a legendary story about a wealthy young man and his beautiful mistress in the French Quarter of New Orleans. The author and mistress was named Julie and she was one-eighth African American. People of this persuasion were declared free people of color but were not given the same rights as those of white people. Open relationships between wealthy families and octoroons were of course not allowed, yet it was common for young men to take a fancy to these octoroons. These women were beautiful and known for having a good education. Mass balls were one social event where white men could check out these women and possibly even select a mistress. When an octoroon mistress had the attention of a white male, this could bring her great wealth, perhaps an apartment, finer food, and even a slave. These men would often have a traditional family and keep their other affairs a secret. Julie's lover, whose name is not known, set her up in a nice apartment on Royal Street. Over the years, Julie fell so deeply in love with this man that she wanted to be his wife. She insisted on this many times, but he knew that if he were to keep his inheritance, this would never be possible. Eventually, he came up with an ultimatum for Julie that he was sure would end the discussion. He told her if she spent the night on the rooftop naked, he would marry her. The next morning he woke up, but Julie was not in bed. He walked up the stairs to the roof and found her dead, lifeless body on the floor, frozen to death. Her ghost is still seen to this day. People have reported seeing her walk along the roof at night, 
clearly visible from the street below, but she only appears at midnight on the coldest night of the year. <laughs>